All right, so let's go ahead and just talk about this one uh, before we get started on it. Um, everybody, would you would you agree with me or disagree if I said that this is a very, very, very recognizable problem? Oh, you don't think we stuff actions. <laughs> but I hope we can agree that this is literally the same exact question that Minus some changes to some of the numbers that we see. Some houses were recently built in the neighborhood. A real estate company has already sold some of the houses. They plan to sell some of the remaining houses. How many unsold houses will be left? Think about that. That's a pretty word for word. That's almost a legit copy of the question, right? That's almost a legit copy of the question. So if I had to ask everybody, uh, what was it that threw you off? If you got stumped on this one, what threw you off? Right, the fractions, the fractions. So this is my first real lesson of the day for you. This is the, well, besides the work problem success strategy, Consider this one of your biggest lessons when it comes to ASVAB success. Notice how literally 90% of y'all thought this problem here, easy, cake, awesome. I ranked this one a zero out of 10 because it was so easy and automatic. But then the moment I changed some of those numbers to fractions, some of y'all get the heebie-jeebies. Why is that? Is it fair to say that this is because we, we froze on this one, but not this one. We froze on this one because... We're not that confident with fractions. Is that fair to say? So this is just me exposing a very common issue with the ASVAB. I said this in the beginning of class. I'm going to say it again. Your ability to work with numbers. That is an overall like 100% multiplier in terms of your success on word problems. Before we continue, just want to take a quick moment to thank you for watching this video. And all I ask is that you please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. That way more people just like you can see these videos. But on top of that, if you're looking for more ways to practice the right way and raise your score with guidance without stressing, then I really wholly 100% recommend my ASVAB All Access program. The program, long story short, helps you watch, practice, and master every topic from the word knowledge to paragraph comprehension, arithmetic reasoning, math knowledge, general science, it's there and it's designed to help you succeed with practicing the right way. So with that said, check out the link in the description to see how it all works because you're gonna have ways to learn in every way that you prefer. And you get my guidance and my support all the way until you pass. So don't hesitate, stop feeling nervous and being anxious and letting yourself feel that way when there's a solution waiting right here for you. Check out the link in the description. That way you see how it works. And then reach out to me if you have any questions about it. Let's get back to raising our scores. Working with numbers and word problems, you need to see those as two separate things. Because when you finally get to the step of calculating and understanding what to do, well, you need to be able to work quickly because there's the time you spend understanding the problem, the time you spend setting it up, and the time you spend actually calculating. And if you cannot calculate quickly, that means you have less time to figure out what the problem's about. But if you can work with numbers, all types of numbers, decimals, percents, fractions, negatives, whole numbers, and you can work with them swiftly without hesitation, well, now you give yourself more time to plan. But I just gave you literally the same exact question, and I bet you half of y'all didn't even try for the simple reason being you saw fractions. Willing to bet. So let's understand where we're supposed to go from here. What we're supposed to go from here is you need to write that down. Like everybody, please do yourself a favor, write these down, especially if you're in my program, sections two, three, four, and five in the math bootcamp that deals with calculating order of operations, negatives, percents, fractions, and decimals. That's where you want to focus. But for everybody here, again, you need to be comfortable with number sense. So let me write that down right over here. Calculation skills. Calculation skills, you must, and I mean must, be proficient with negatives or well, basic whole numbers, first of all. Basic whole numbers, 
Let me make this a little smaller here. Negatives. Order of operations. Decimals. Fractions. And percents. You know, I cannot stress this enough. I really cannot stress this enough. If you are willing to take the time to master each of the fundamental calculation skills, you're going to be good because you will have all the time in the world to figure your story and setting everything up and less time worrying about, oh, how do I take one fourth of 60? Right, we, we won't have to be doing that. So I'll let you guys write that down very briefly and then we're gonna get right into that problem here. Hey, Henry, congrats on getting the 72, man. There we go. 72, hey, that's pretty dang good. Henry, text me, text me, text me, text me. Congratulations, man. And you've been in these classes for a short time. You've been with me for like two months now, three almost, maybe. You've been here for just a short time. You made that kind of improvement. Let's go. Good case. All right, so there it is, everybody. Go ahead and write those down again. Last chance. We are going to move on. Again, whole numbers, negatives, order of operations, decimals, fractions, percentages. That is part of calculation. That is not a part of storytelling, but it will absolutely help you not freak out when you see one of those numbers because you know that it's just a number. One month. Oh, man. Even, come on, man. Let's go. Text me, man. Congratulations. Congratulations there. Let's get it. All right, so man, all right, everybody. So let's go ahead and take a look here. One more time. What was the goal of this question? What was the initial goal? What was it? Remind me, what was that initial goal? And so when I say the initial goal, not the strategy, but what are we looking for in the question? I got the first step, read the question. What is the question telling us that we need to figure out? Right, how many unsold houses? That's right. So right here, how many unsold houses? Just like the previous problem, how many unsold houses will be left? Sounds great. So we're gonna write that down again, just like we had last time. Blank unsold houses. And this is gonna seem very familiar, but pay attention to how there's literally no difference. You just have to know how to work with fractions. Here we go. 60 houses were just recently built in a neighborhood. Okay. We're gonna we understand that that's gonna be important in a second. So I'll start right here. 60 houses built. And let's organize our information. Next step, next sentence we see. Let me actually highlight this. And then up next it says a real estate company has already sold a quarter or one fourth of the houses. Okay, let's highlight that. Has already sold quarter of the houses right there. Let's really take a circle here. Let's circle that right there. We sold one quarter of the houses. So right here, we can write that down. So this right here is where a lot of people will freak out. So here's the thing, everybody. How do you take a quarter of the houses? How do you calculate that? Let's see who knows. Who knows this? How do we take a quarter of the houses? Straightforward question. How do we find one fourth of the houses? What operation is that? A fourth of the houses were sold. What does that mean? So I see a couple of different numbers and, and operations here. I, I like seeing that. There we go. There we go. I see a lot of ideas coming out now. Okay, cool. So there, there are a few different ways because remember, fractions and decimals are the same thing. They're just numbers. Again, just numbers. And so here's the thing. If we're taking a quarter of the houses, there's two ways to look at this. One quarter of the house is sold. You could say one fourth times 60, or you can view it as 60 divided by four. Both of these work just fine. Let me explain why. 
everybody. Uh, in the math world, the word of by itself means what operation? Multiplication. The word of, out of, if you said out of, that's division. But if you just say of, multiplication. And so that's where this comes in. Of, that's where the multiplication comes in. Um, and then everybody, when we see the phrase, you know, the houses, so right over here, uh, how many houses are we talking about? 60, right? 60 houses. It's 60 houses. So all we did was really just translate that phrase. One-fourth of the houses were sold. One-fourth times 60. Just like that. Now, if you're looking at this and you're wondering, well, coach, okay, I see this. I see how that makes sense. But how is that the same as that? How is that the same as 60 divided by 4? Well, this is where you have to understand how to multiply with fractions. So I'm giving you a quick little run through, but you need to make sure you understand how to work with these different types of numbers and their operations. Because everyone, one fourth times 60, that's legitimately the same thing as saying one fourth times. If I wanted to write 60 as a fraction, everybody, I could write 60 over what? Jonathan, thank you. Appreciate that. That was our first answer there. And then Dana was right after that. But yeah, that'll be 60 over one. It's the same deal. Anything divided by one is itself, right? So if I wanted to see it as a fraction, it'd be just like that. And if you understand that, then you will be able to tell that you have to do one times 60. That's 60. Four times one, that's four. So in truth, taking one fourth of 60 is the same as 60 divided by four. Same as 60 divided by four. Does that make a little more sense for anybody out there? Yeah, it's the same as 60 divided by four. We have got to be able to give ourselves these opportunities because again, if the only difference between this problem and the previous one was legitimately the type of number that you used, that should not make a difference. That should not make a difference. And I know it does because this is where we are right now. I know, I know, but that's the problem though. We have got to make sure that these fundamental things that we do have all the control over, we can take care of it. And just like you're watching this video for free here on YouTube, I got more free materials for you, my ass bad party people. We've got a free practice test that comes with video solutions so you can learn from every single mistake and identify those topics that you need to crush and work on. And on top of that, you can get a free class with me on Zoom once a week. And so that's all included in my free practice test with my free class included. Click that link in this video or in the description, sign up, keep learning for free and keep raising your score. I'm proud of you. Let's keep working hard and let's get back to the problem. So now we, we can just look at this as 60 divided by four. Let's figure out what that is. Four goes into 60 how many times? Well, four goes into six. That's gonna go into that one time. Subtract that four and we get two. Drop that zero right there. Four goes into 20 how many times on party people? Right, it's gonna be five and it's gonna make 15. So boom, that's gonna equal 15. Everybody, what does that 15 represent? Help me out here. What does that mean? Right, that's how many were sold. Don't forget that, right? 15 houses sold. So if we sold 15 houses, how many houses are left up to this point? Let's go ahead and just kind of bring this up here. We had 60 houses to start. If we sold 15, what do we do with that, everybody? What do we do with that again? Yeah, we're gonna subtract. We're gonna subtract. So all we're doing is we're still telling the same story. We just gotta think about these numbers a little differently, that's it. So we subtract and 60 minus 15, that's gonna give us 45 houses left. Are we done, everybody? Is the answer 45, is it D? We did a lot of work here, right? Is the answer D, are we done? Are we done? No, we have got to finish the story, right? We have got to finish the story. What does the story say? Well, here, look, we built 60 houses, sold a fourth of them, a quarter of them. We found out how many are left. Because remember, the answer is how many houses are left? So we have 45 houses left, but we have to ask ourselves, 
did we finish the story? No, because it says they plan to sell one third of the remaining houses. So we still have one more step to take care of. Everybody, yes or no, do you see that? We still have one more step to take care of. Planning to sell one third of the remaining houses. And notice how it says one third of the remaining. So not one third of 60, everybody. Again, it says one third of the remaining houses. So it's not gonna be one third of 60. It's gonna be one third of what? One third of what? Exactly. Exactly. So again, welcome everybody. My name's Coach Anderson. I'll be your mathematical spiritual tour guide for today, guys. And let's go in and take one third of 45 and let's finish this off. Sounds good. So we have ourselves one third of the remaining. So one third of 45. Let's figure out what that is. Everybody, one third of 45 is the same thing as saying what over what? Forty-five over three. That is correct. Just like we saw earlier, one third of forty-five is the same thing as one third times forty-five, which is just forty-five over three. And forty-five over three. If we try to figure that out, we can do this long division if we'd like to. But we see that three goes into four one time. Then you got fifteen. Three goes into fifteen five times. So there it is. One third of forty-five equals fifteen. Is that the answer, everybody? Is 15 the answer? Is it B? Is it B? No, because remember, 15 right here represents how many were sold, how many more houses were sold. So we have 15 sold right there. It seems crazy, right? But you have got to follow the story. And so what we have is we have that 45 that were left. We sold 15 more. So 45 minus 15 equals what, everybody? 30. 30 unsold houses. And we've got to be willing to, to go through these steps. Obviously, can we take that long on the real test? Of course not, right? Of course not. But while you practice, while you try to understand how to not freak out and how to stay calm, cool, and collected, well, this is going to be well worth it down the road once you actually get used to this. But we've got to put in the time, just like we do with learning our times tables, just like we do with learning fractions, decimals, percents. This matters. Word problem strategy matters. And so we both know this video just helped you with your test anxiety by just a little bit. And to keep lowering your test anxiety and keep raising your confidence, that's what my ASVAB All Access program is for. The link's right up here. Click it, watch the video on how it works, and you'll see exactly why thousands of my students have raised their scores and gotten the jobs they want. So click there, watch the video, and sign up to raise your score. I'll see you soon.